What is up my friends and how's it going and welcome to the first episode of a brand new series with your fellow comrade Summary. This Christmas I decided to launch a new series which is pretty much a factional overview for the factions of Divide et Tempera, Total War Rome 2. And uh, in this very first episode I will be going through the uh, different factions and how I rank them up. And keep in mind this ranking is of course subjective, some of you may agree or disagree with my personal opinion on how I rank these factions. But just a few things to keep in mind, my criteria for ranking these factions are A. Human versus AI, not human against human. And uh, B. It is also the quality of troops, how diverse these armies are. And also, what population class do they draw their... Uh, their roster from as this is really important when you wage wars of conquest the more elite troops you have coming from a uh, lower population class such as the population class three and four the better the faction will rate however without any further ado let us go ahead and have a look at this tier maker that i have made it is a custom tier maker for total war rome 2 divided impera a faction tier list it does have six categories from S tier, which is godlike, all the way down to F tier, which is horrible. And of course, I have arranged all of the faction emblems down here at the bottom. And they are chronological. So as you can see, you have Rome, Carthage, the Diadochi factions, the Greek factions. If we look over here, we have the nomadic factions, all neatly arranged. And you guys can go ahead and use this tier maker if you like. And I will leave the link down in the description. However, without any further delay, let us hop right into the ranking system. And the very first faction is Roma. And as many of you might know, Roma is my favorite faction in the game. And that comes as no surprise. A lot of us who play Rome 2 Total War like Roma. And I am going to put it right into S tier, which is godlike. And um, I'm just going to prove as to why this isn't bias. So if we hop right into the game, select Roma as a faction. As you can see they have a pretty massive and versatile roster and this is only 25 percent of the entire roman roster however if i load up the final uh, roman imperial legionary which is a preset that i have made for my custom battles based on what i believe to be a historical army composition for a imperial Lo roman legion as you can see uh, they do benefit a lot from their auxiliary uh, system and uh, if you look at this bottom row over here every single unit is an auxiliary unit and all of them have pretty respectable stats such as this archer with 38 armor which is amazing for an archer unit and of course you have uh, auxiliary spearmen which are quite good on the flanks and you have a crazy good auxiliary cavalry with 41 armor and ammunition so these are pretty much uh, tarantine cavalry for those of you who know the effectiveness of tarantine cavalry or even companion cavalry on steroids and all of these units actually come from the fourth population class moving up to the core citizen uh, army of the romans as you can see you do have imperial legionaries which are some of the best swordsmen in game and they actually come from the third class population however if you go for the veteran legionaries and of course the eagle or the first cohort they do come from the second class population so pretty much only your general is first class population your entire army for the most part or i would at least say so four so i would at least say 70 80 percent of your army comes from third class and fourth class population with 50 percent coming from fourth class population Keep in mind, uh, the Roman army isn't really uh, good at a single particular task. However, they are versatile. So, for example, if you consider your legionary cohorts to be your frontline troops, they are not as good as frontline troops of other factions, such as the phalangite units of the Diadochi or even the hoplite units of the Greek city-states. However, they are far more versatile by comparison. Uh, these imperial legionaries can be used as flanking troops as well whereas phalanx 
Uh, hoplite phalanx as well as spike phalanx units aren't that good when it comes to flanking and they pretty much just serve one purpose. So moving back to the tier maker, as you can see, there is no bias. Rome clearly deserves its top spot in the S tier as godlike. Moving on to the next faction, we have Carthage, which is uh, Rome's major rival. And it is also an S tier uh, faction in my opinion. However, it ranks uh, behind Rome. And uh, that is due to the fact that Carthage is sort of kind of like Rome. So if we select Carthage, in that they have a special mercenary barracks system, which gives them access to certain mercenary troops, such as, you know, you have the mercenary heavy, uh, heavy uh, Celtic spearmen, very respectable units. However, these do not come from the fourth class population. They do come from the third class, which is the subject population. In the case of Carthage, of course, Carthage has, um, unlike Rome, Carthage does have access to elephant units, especially the Carthaginian Atlas elephant units are among the top five best elephant units in the game. And as such, uh, Carthage is also a very diverse faction, which uh, does not heavily depend upon the second and first class population uh, for, uh, for its main army. So, Carthage does deserve uh, an S tier like Rome, but it's not quite as powerful as Rome. Moving on to the next faction, we have uh, the Diadochi, five Diadochi factions, starting off with the Antigonids. And I would actually place them in A tier, powerful. And uh, most of you might be S tier, but I am going to reserve the S tier for the truly powerful, powerful, extremely godlike factions. And that is because when we look at the Antigonidae, they do have really good troops, a really good roster, very diverse. They do have uh, Thorax Bronze Shield Pikemen, which are, in my opinion, the second best frontline units in the game. They do have really good shock uh, shot pikes, such as the uh, Royal Pikemen, as well as the Elite Guard or the Agema. Uh, apart from that, they do have really good Thorakitai or good swordsmen. Um, they have decent cavalry, really good uh, melee cav, a really good, uh, a really good uh, missile cavalry as well. However, apart from that, they don't have much going on for them. So they do have a very all-rounded faction. However, most of their troops come from the second class population and a few come from the third class population. When we look at the third class population units, they're not really all that great in comparison to Roma and Carthage, so that is the reason why they drop to uh, A tier, which is powerful. Next up, we have the Bactrians, and the Bactrians, I would actually place them ahead of the Carthaginians, and most of you might wonder, is Bactria really all that much better than the Antigonids, considering they are also a Diadochi faction? But let's hop into the Bactrians, and as you can see straight off the bat, they do have a lot more versatility in comparison to the Antigonids. They have the same caliber of uh, settler units, uh, I'm sorry, uh, phalangite units. Um, these Macedonian settler phalangites are the equivalent of the Thorax uh, bronze shield pikemen. However, apart from that, they do have a lot more versatility when it comes to missile troops. They do have access to the Morian longbowmen, which are some of the best archer units in the game they do have access to Cretan settlers which is also arguably some of the best archer unit in game apart from that they have insane shock cavalry and uh, their shock cavalry actually is from the Nicene horse breed which makes it even more powerful apart from that they also have access to horse archer units um, and they do have access to elephant units so clearly you can see they are much better than the Antigonids and that is why they rank in S tier and in my personal preference ahead of the Carthaginians. Even though most of their units do draw from that second class population as most of the factions you will see over here do that. Um, I do rate them better than the Carthaginians because they have better frontline troops, they have better elephant units, uh, they have better cavalry, they're just all around better. The only thing they don't have is the Agema or the shot pikes that the Macedonians have. However, um, they are 
they make up for it with their elephant units so definitely i uh, would rank bactria as an s tier next faction we have is epirus now epirus is also in my opinion a S tier faction they do have access to elephant units however where's epirus here we go epirus they are pretty good they do have uh, really good uh, units they do have Egema uh, or chaonian guards which are in my opinion the best pikemen i would actually rate them as the second best pikemen um head of the thorax bronze shield pikes and that is because these guys actually share the same stats as your silver shield pikemen however they do come from the first class population so they are just not as good however they do have decent melee cavalry the aperior thorax cavalry actually comes from the second class population and they have a whopping 45 armor 16 melee defense and apart from that they do also have access to tarantine cavalry which are really good in my opinion they also have access to Syrian mercenary elephants, however these are factional mercenaries so they can't really spam them and that is why they actually rank behind the Bactrians, otherwise they would be quite neck to neck with the Bactrians. But however, even the Bactrian cavalry is better because they do have horse archers as well as Nicene shock cavalry and Nicene horse breed is the best horse breed in game period. Next up we have the Egyptians, I would rate them as A tier which is powerful and I would put them ahead of the Macedonians and I know a lot of you are fans of the Antagonids, so am I but when it comes to the Egyptians they are just simply better and the reason being is that they are versatile also, they do have really good missile cavalry so let's begin with where they differ from the antagonists so they do have access to elephants these are not really great elephants they are african elephants they are only 18 men per unit so they are quite substandard in comparison to other factions that do have access to elephants however their missile cavalry is quite powerful as you can see 45 armor 13 melee attack 14 melee defense this is as good as a melee uh, unit and uh, the reason it's actually kept in missile cavalry is so that the AI uh, uses them accordingly but as you can see it's not really a missile cavalry unit it just has three ammunition so it is more like a Tarantine cavalry on steroids once again apart from that they really also have good shock cavalry and melee cavalry this Egyptian linen, uh, linen cataphract unit I would give special attention to as it does come from second class population and it is pretty good unit to come from the second class population. Apart from that they do get access to Cretian archers as well, something which the um, Antigonids don't get access to. However the Antigonids kind of make up for it with their special dart slingers, however I would rate Cretian archers a lot better than dart slingers. Uh, dart slingers are more of a hybrid between uh, javelin type and archer type units so uh, the main uh, purpose of uh, dart slingers is to flank the enemy units and hit them from behind whereas these Cretian archers can shoot over your own front lines apart from that the reason why i would rank egypt ahead of the antagonists is that their Clarouch Thorax Pikemen is the equivalent of Thorax Bronze Shield Pikemen. However, they do have access to the Chosen Native Pikemen, which share the exact same stats, minus a slightly lower morale with their bron Thorax Bronze Shield Pikemen equivalent. And these guys, Chosen Native Pikemen, actually come from the third class. So you can actually spam these guys and kind of ignore these guys. I mean, it's not worth getting these guys since they only give plus three morale and you pretty much have the exact same pikemen as the antagonists but they come from the third class population apart from that you also share the short pikes that the antagonists have and you also have the equivalent of the Epirus, um you know the Epirus silver shield pikemen or the kaonian guard or chaonian guard i don't know how you pronounce that but these guys come from the first class population so they are not as good as the silver shield pikemen apart from that you also have really good spearmen you have uh, access to some really good swordsmen as well the roman traitor legionaries which are quite good which are like roman legionaries and they do come from the third class population as well however they are capped to eight per faction however uh since i typically go for just two 
uh, army you can technically have four armies with these units uh, and uh, as such as you can see Egypt really is a fantastic faction next up we have the Seleucids and I would rate the Seleucids in S tier uh, about the Bactrians and for most of you who have spoken to me about my personal preference you would know that the Seleucids are actually my favorite Hellenic faction the reason being is that they have a really diverse uh, faction roster they do have access to chariots however i wouldn't really use these chariots as they are only 25 men strong however even though they are heavy chariots they can be easily defeated because they only have 25 men in the unit and chariots tend to have typically low morale so i would stay away from these chariots however they do have access to indian armored elephants and of course they also have access to you know nicene cavalry silver shield pikemen which are the best pikemen unit in game and they come from the second class population they have access to uh, cretian archers syrian archers uh, mercenary units however apart from that you have really good silver shield swordsmen also coming from the second class population as well as um, Seleucid Royal Guard. These are really good to protect the flanks of your Silver Shield Pikemen. However, they do come from the first class population. So I would actually recommend using the Thurio Spearmen or some of your Hoplite units. And Thurio Spearmen, of course, aren't as good as these guys. However, they're quite good at protecting the flanks and uh, warding off uh, flanking maneuvers by enemy cavalry units. And uh, you might say that the Seleucids and the Bactrians are pretty much similar with their elephants, Nicene, Shock Cavalry. And uh, why would I rate the Seleucids ahead of the Bactrians? And that is because if you actually look at the stats of each of these individual units, they are slightly better than their Bactrian counterparts. And as such, I think the Seleucids really deserve to be ahead of the Bactrians, but only by a slight margin. I would say uh, it's pretty much neck to neck with uh, these four factions whereas Rome is a clear winner and I would say with Egypt it's kind of like you know they could be rated as an S tier faction however I want to keep the S tier list as small as possible and uh, Egypt just slightly misses out on that S tier rating next up we are done with the Diadochi we move to uh, the Mauryan Samraja um the Mauryans are a really good faction and most of you who have seen my uh, Let's Play series, you will know that the Mauryans are pretty powerful. And the reason they are powerful is that they have access to the best elephant units in the game. They also have access to the best chariot unit in the game. They have some really good infantry, but the drawback is that most of these infantry come from the second class population as well as the first class population. And as such, they are not really that good. They have respectable frontline units. For those of you who have seen my Morian Let's Play series, you will know that I use these Morian Armored Spearmen a lot. However, one of the mistakes I did is that I never used defensive formation on them. And uh, this pretty much actually adds 15 armor on top of their 25 armor, which makes them 40 armor. So that's pretty respectable. And it doesn't come with any real drawbacks apart from movement speed. So I would recommend using these units however these frontline units will not fare well against any hoplite or pike units so they're not as good and they also come from the second class population so they're nothing spectacular they also have really good missile troops um, some of the best archer units if not the best archer units in game with 215 range and apart from that they do have some shock cavalry nothing really spectacular it's not nicene it's not uh, really um, anything great however they do have access to some of the s chariots as well as elephant units in game so they are a fairly versatile army and as such i would rate them as a tier but i would put them behind the um ptolemies as well as the antagonists and the reason being is that uh, even though these factions do not and i might actually put them ahead of the antagonists uh, and the reason being is that the Ptolemies actually have a counter to Morian Elephants. The Antagonists also have the counter, but for most of you who have seen my tactical guide series on Elephants, you would know that I could charge a low tier Elephant into the Elite Elephants of the Morian faction and then follow that up with uh, 
you know the short bike men who have insane bonus versus elephants and while i do have short bike men with the uh, with the macedonians um, i will not really have anything to counter the charge of the elephant units and uh, you know what i could actually use heavy macedonian cavalry as elephants don't really deal a lot of damage on the charge versus cavalry units and pretty much um Elephants are just there to stop cavalry charges and then over time slowly grind down the cavalry. So I would place the Antigonids ahead of the Morians as well. So next up we move into the uh, uh, Gaelic factions and starting off with we have the Arverni. And I would put Arverni in Decent, um, which is B tier. And the reason being is that the Arverni are actually quite, uh, you know, quite versatile they do have phalanx type units and these are some of uh, really good phalanx type units however um this one comes uh, the argoy or the late gallic noble shield wall comes from the first class and uh, the second class variant doesn't really hold up against the first class variant so i would uh, say that they do have respectable phalanx unit however nothing as good as the hellenic counterparts Apart from that, they do have some access to really good melee infantry. However, uh, the two really good units, which is the Gallic Oatsworn as well as the Gallic Champions, both come from first class population, so it's nothing uh, spectacular. They do have some really good spear uh, units and special mention for the naked spearmen. They do have, um, you know, really good stats to counter enemy cavalry. And as you can see, 14 melee attack coupled with uh, 19 bonus versus cavalry, which means they will deal uh, or they do have a combined melee attack of 33 versus cavalry, which is insane. And of course, they also have melee. Uh, this also adds into the weapon damage. So they do have uh, 31 plus 19. That's 40, 50 you know, weapon damage against cavalry. So that is pretty strong. Um, keep in mind, I am playing with the patch which hasn't been released, the winter patch. So some of my stats might not line up with the stats that you guys have. And since the winter patch is just around the corner, I thought I'd activate it as a modder. And I would rank the factions based on the winter patch. And the winter patch isn't really complete. However, it should release in a month's time. I mean, this is tentative. A lot of the work that we modders do is free of charge. So... There isn't really any deadline. Apart from that, nothing really spectacular to see in uh, the missile department for the Averni. You do have access to these Gallic Heavy Skirmishers. And I have recently really started to like Pelta Stay units or Javelin type units as they can really do some significant damage when they flank uh, the enemy front line. And uh, I would ref definitely recommend, previously for most of you who have watched my series, you'd know that my melee armies would have four archers. However, for now, I would recommend using, uh, you know, replacing two of those with uh, two heavy skirmishers or Peltaste units, as they can really, really be uh, very effective flankers, and they are quite worse that. Apart from that, when we look at the shock cavalry, um, Gallic Cavalry is quite good, really good uh, melee defense uh, stats, melee attack stats, uh, decent armor. However, they do have the Horsebreed Marais Pose and now this is the second best Horsebreed, which is why uh, the Averni actually pop up into decent. Next up, we have uh, the Boyai and the Boyai, I would actually put it at C tier. The reason being is that the Boyai, they are a very melee focused faction. They do have some really good melee troops. Uh, however, you know, they don't have really good uh, phalanx units. They don't have really good spear units. I mean, the only respectable spear unit is this one and it comes from the first class population. The other spear units aren't really good at anything. I mean, uh, they can be kind of like soak up the damage so that you can preserve your higher population classes however they're not really that good against cavalry either as you can see uh, the boyai light spearmen just have seven melee attack and 17 bonus against cavalry which means their overall is um just 24 versus of course in the averni's case you have 14 plus 19 it's 33 so it's almost 10 melee attack more so 
Uh, finally, apart from that, you do have some decent um, archers over here. These guys are pretty good. I mean, I would use them in a kind of like Peltaste fashion. And, um, you know, they do have the scare ability. Uh, apart from that, they do have good melee attack, melee defense. Uh, pretty low armor, but, uh, you know, they're pretty good as flanking troops. They're... Cavalry units are pretty much similar to the Averni uh, cavalry units. However, they don't have the Mariposa breed, so they're not as powerful. And so as such, nothing spectacular. I will put them in C tier. Next up, we have Galatia. And I would put Galatia up in B tier behind the Averni. The reason being is that while the Galatians have a pretty decent melee units, and they do have these Galatian legionaries, uh, which are quite good... Uh, you know, frontline or main units. They don't really have uh, spectacular frontline units. This unit over here is quite similar to the uh, Averni uh, Singatoy or yeah, Kingatoy. However, the Averni Kingatoy is better. Apart from that, they do have a decent unit, the Galatian Naked Warriors, which is similar to the Naked uh, Spearmen of the Averni which is really good at countering uh, enemy cavalry and uh, added feature they are uh, you know extra eager when they have higher morale uh, which i don't think the uh, averni counterpart has apart from that they don't have really uh, much going on for them in the cavalry department uh, not that good uh, in comparison to the averni but their chariots is what sets them apart and a little bit of a spoiler over here. Their chariots are going to be upgraded in the coming winter patch. So they are going to be quite powerful. And I am keeping in mind the winter update when I am ranking these factions. So for those of you who have seen my Morian series, you know that chariots, when used right, can rack up 1,000 kills easily. So chariots are what put uh, the Galatians in B tier instead of C tier. Next up, we have the Nervii. And I would actually put the Nervii ahead of the Averni and the Galatians. And the reason being is that the Nervii is pretty identical to the Averni when it comes to uh, units and the roster. However, they also have chariots, which puts them ahead. But these chariots are only 30 men in the chariot, so they're not as powerful. However, they're quite respectable. In terms of phalanx units, they are slightly uh, weaker than their Averni counterpart. But in the melee department, they match up to the Averni counterpart. And what's more is that both of these units, this is kind of like the a slightly weaker version of the Oatsworn. And this is equal to the, uh, uh, or a slightly weaker version of the, uh, the Gallic Champions. But both of them, for just about three less armor, come from the second class population, which is what makes them a lot better than the Averni since you don't really have to depend on your first class population. However, when we look at the shock cavalry, they also have very similar shock cavalry to the Averni uh, Gallic Late Heavy Cavalry. They do have slightly better armor and they also enjoy the uh, Mariposa Horsebreed, so I would rate them above the Averni for this very reason. Next up, we have the last final Gaelic faction, which is... Uh, the Scordisii, and I would actually put the Scordisii in B tier behind the Galatians. And the reason being is that they do have some decent or pretty respectable uh, melee infantry. However, their cavalry isn't that great. They don't have any chariots or any kind of units. They do have uh, decent uh, phalanx units, and I would in fact say their phalanx infantry is actually better than the Averni or the Nervii. And the reason being is that while the early Scordisii's shield wall uh, is actually a regular hoplite phalanx type unit, the late variant is actually is actually a short pike kind of a unit, even though it does say shield wall. And uh, the, the way I'm going to show that to you is if you look at the uh, melee attack and melee defense, you see 8 and 9. And if you look at the bonus versus elephants, you see it's 21 and 21, uh, which is similar to, let's say I go to the Antigonids over here, which is similar to a hoplite uh, unit. Let's go for a better hoplite unit, 9, 19. And as you can see, 25, 25 bonus, very similar. However, when you look at the late variant, you'll see the melee attack is suddenly 13 and 11. 
And the bonus versus elephants is 30 and the bonus versus cavalry is 14. And this is because it is actually a short pike unit. And as you can see over here, this very similar stats, higher melee attack, lower melee defense, a crazy bonus versus elephants and uh, a slightly lesser bonus versus cavalry. So they do have very respectable phalanx type units, but apart from that, there's nothing much else going on for them. And that is why they actually rank slightly behind the Galatians, uh, as the Galatians will be able to whoop them in the cavalry department. They do have some respectable skirmishers, uh, 200 men strong, these guys in particular, the naked skirmishers. And I think when it comes to uh, Gallic factions, we are seeing a trend over here that the the, the less clothes your <laughs> troops have, or the more you see naked in the name, they are actually better troops and quite good troops. Next up, we move to the Britonic faction, starting with the Iceni. And actually, the Iceni are B tier, and they actually are better than all of the uh, Gallic counterparts. And... Um, and the reason being is that they actually have a single reason is that they actually have access to heavy chariots 60 men strong and uh, they have decent cavalry not as good as their gallic counterparts stat wise very similar but they don't have the mariposa horse breed apart from that they also have really good slingers at 215 range which is similar to Beleric slingers or even the rhodian slingers and uh, these guys are quite good. Um, they also have access to decent uh, Peltaste units. Um, apart from that, uh, they have uh, not much going on for them in as far as melee is concerned. Pretty average, mediocre. Uh, I would say not mediocre, that's a bit harsh, but slightly above average uh, troops. They have decent swordsmen and uh, decent spearmen. And uh, keep in mind, their phalanx type unit actually comes from the first class population, so I wouldn't use them as a frontline troop. So, what they're actually missing is frontline units. However, if you play um, in a similar fashion to a Roman legionary and focus on sword units, then you can pretty much, uh, you know, completely uh, play in a different playstyle. So, I would rate the Iceni above their Gallic counterparts. Next up, we have the I Were You. And the Iwaryu, in my opinion, are actually better than the um, than the Iceni, and that is because in the case of the Iceni, these chariots are not spammable; they are part of your factional mercenary roster. However, in the case of the Iwaryu, they are spammable, so it's slightly more convenient in terms of cavalry. Pretty much similar to you know, in all other departments, they do have some nice Peltaste units. Uh, similar in the melee department we do have uh, you know some pretty similar units and once again just gonna have a look at the naked warriors and as you can see the naked warriors pretty good stats as a flanking unit pretty respectable and I wouldn't typically use these units before however I'm starting to play a lot of custom battles testing out the new patch and I'm starting to like these lower tier lightly armored faster quicker units so I would really place these guys ahead of the Iceni and uh, or pretty much call them neck to neck. However, without any further ado, let's move on to the final Britonic faction and that is the Caledoni. And the Caledoni is actually a C tier. The reason being is that they're pretty much similar to their Britonic cousins. However, they don't really have uh, chariots and that's the only thing that sets them apart from the uh, Gallic factions and makes them better than the Gallic factions um, and they don't have that so they are actually going to be um, pretty average. Next up we move on to the Iberian factions and starting with the Arivachi I would place them in average or C tier that is because um, let's uh, where are the Arivachi? <laughs> I wish these were also chronological and uh, all right let's okay they are second and that's because they don't really have any like spectacular units I mean these guys would be their frontline units uh, they are 300 men strong they come from the second ma uh, second population class don't really have that great movement speed 
and uh, they don't have any formation and as you can see this is a recurring theme with the iberian factions is that none of their units have formation attacks and formation attacks is quite powerful however when used right i would say that you know i am being a bit too harsh on the iberian factions uh, they are quite good in terms of flanking as you do have some of these uh, stealth type units and you also have some really respectable Peltaste type units. Uh, the Aravachi medium skirmishers, they do have just four ammunition, but really good melee attack, melee defense, a respectable armor of 20 and speed of four. And they do, and they are 200 men strong. So these guys are pretty much as good as melee units with, uh, with you know, decent melee stats and four ammunition or four javelins, which are quite powerful. So I would say, you know, it's a very different playing style. However, head to head, they are not going to do as well. Apart from that, even we look at the Iberian Cavalry, they are pretty decent. Um, nothing really spectacular in comparison to the Gallic counterparts. They are a bit more uh, towards the skirmishing side of things, similar to the Tarantine Cavalry. However, they are not as good as the Tarantine Cavalry, in my personal opinion. That is because the Tarantine Cavalry actually come with a lot more armor. I would place them in C tier. Next up, we have the Edetani. I will place them ahead of the Aravachi, and the reason being that while the Aravachi focuses a bit more on melee troops doing uh, a lot of the flanking and the sneaking around and so forth, um, when it comes to the Edetani, the Edetani don't have that many options. However, they do have the uh, Scutari, which is the frontline uh, spear type unit. Apart from that, they also have a very, uh, they don't have really uh, decent, I mean, let's say these guys are 22 or 23. Uh, attack against cavalry so not that great however uh, they do have a very good uh, skirmisher unit over here with 16 melee attack 25 armor so these guys are really good 200 men strong really good at flanking these iberian medium skirmishers are better than their aravachi counterparts however apart from that uh, they do have better cavalry also than their um, aravachi counterparts so i would actually rate these guys higher than the Aravachi as in most uh, engagements cavalry is the deciding factor. Next up we have the Lusitani which is the final Iberian faction and the Lusitani is the only Iberian faction that actually goes into B tier and they actually I would rank them ahead of the Scordisii and the um, Galatians as well. The reason being is that the Lusitani got all the love in my opinion when it comes to the Iberians and they have decent uh, Lusitani veteran spearmen that can form your main front line. Apart from that, they also have Scutari. Uh, it says Scutari spearmen. However, these guys are actually Scutari swordsmen, in my experience. We will notify the team to correct that. Apart from that, they do have really good uh, flanking units, uh, such as the Lusitani bear warriors. As you can see, 17 melee attack, 20 armor, and uh, decent speed. And they also have the scare ability, so they are quite good. Um, a decent uh, skirmisher type unit as you can see over here 200 men strong 12 melee attack 11 melee defense so not as offensive as um, the Edetani variant however better than the Aravachi variant apart from that they do have uh, this missile cavalry which I would recommend uh, versus any of their shock cavalry now I would get the shock cavalry for um, or this uh, kind of like a hybrid shock melee cavalry for the general however i would recommend this for your cavalry main cavalry and the reason being is that they have 38 armor 10 ammunition five shots per minute so pretty slow on the shots per minute and uh, really respectable melee stats 13 melee attack 12 melee defense so they are pretty much again tarantine cavalry or companion cavalry on steroids so very versatile roster i would place them in b tier which is decent ahead of the Galatians and the Scordisii, but behind the factions with better cavalry, such as the Maripos variants and the chariots. Next up, we have the nomadic factions. And in the nomadic factions, it's all pretty much neck to neck. For those of you who are watching my Parthian series, you will know that horse archers are insane. I'm not going to go through each of the nomadic factions. They are fairly, fairly similar. And to be honest with you, I don't really know. Uh, the nomadic factions are the major focus of the winter update. 
so i don't really know all the changes that are coming to them but i am uh, with these three factions just going to put them up in a tier they are very powerful and i would just put the roxalani ahead of the other two slightly although they are quite similar but there are a lot of changes coming to these factions and pretty much the nomadic factions are the only factions i'm going to raid based on their current rosters uh, nothing much to see here they don't have much going on for them in the infantry department but who needs infantry when you have horse archers uh, you just pretty much just use infantry for sieges or if you fancy just pretty much besiege a settlement and wait for the garrison to sally out and attack your horse archers and uh, that's pretty good and uh, once again i wouldn't rate them s tier although they could very well be s tier because they can pretty much whack the crap out of any ai faction however they are not really good at city defense and other versatile so there's they're just a one trick pony uh you know really chose that word pony and uh, yeah so nothing much else to discuss about the nomadic factions let's move on to the hellenic city states starting off with athens i would actually place athens ahead of every other faction uh, in b tier the reason being is athens is really versatile as a um as a greek city state and uh, if you see they have really respectable melee spear units uh, decent phalanx units a singular pike unit um really good uh, missile troops uh, decent shock, uh, shock cavalry a tarantine uh, cavalry which is slightly better than the original tarantine cavalry over here and they have access to both however <laughs> You know, Athens is kind of like Carthage in that they do have the similar mercenary kind of system. And so every unit you see over here that has mercenary in the name, such as mercenary pikemen, uh, mercenary um, Turio Spears, mercenary elite Turio Spears, mercenary thorax, you know, all of these are mercenary units actually come from the third class population. So they are actually quite powerful. And that is why I put them up in B tier in decent ahead of all of these guys because while they do have that versatility most of their units come from third class population so it's quite easy to expand as athens next up we have pergamon and pergamon is actually not so good as a faction they are versatile however i would say then they do have better frontline units than the lusitani however they're not as good in comparison to athens so pergamon where are you here we go they do have decent swords unit uh, and they do have decent spear units uh, they do have a single pike unit and this pike unit comes from the second class population and it is not as good as the athenian mercenary pikemen so uh, there's a little something that you can pay attention to they do have decent uh Peltaste. then again so does athens they do have access to tarantine cavalry and other good cavalry so they are pretty versatile in comparison to these uh, factions in average so they are in b tier they're slightly better than these factions up here in the uh you know that they overtake but they're not as good as athens plain and simple next up we have rhodos and rhodos i would say is another uh, hellenic faction that does make it to the decent However, they are not as good as Pergamon or Athens. And the reason being is that Rhodos doesn't have a lot going on for them in the Phalanx department. They have pretty substandard Phalanx units. And uh, they pretty much have okay-ish, um, you know, missile units. I'm not really a fan of Slingers. Although Slingers, when they flank, can be pretty good. And they can be pretty good against as a cavalry counter. You have access to some decent cavalry. Nothing... Uh, that raises any eyebrows nothing really spectacular you have access to decent spearmen very typical uh heavy spear uh sorry swordsmen and so i would actually put them at the end of b tier they would actually in fact even fall to c tier or average and you know what i'm actually going to put them in average since um, i don't really have anything that sets them out apart from their access to you know rhodian slingers but rhodian slingers are you know available to any faction as mercenary units they do have access to this really interesting um, rhodian light hoplites which are kind of like spear hoplite units with a speed of four decent melee attack and uh, 
and also they do have uh, you know lingers or stones i guess slinging ammunition which they can fire so they are kind of like a good counter to enemy cavalry unit however wouldn't say they're anything like really crazy so yep with rodos we are looking at uh c tier next up we have sparta which is also another favorite of mine i wouldn't say it's the absolute favorite it's in fact uh, just special uh, mention when it comes to favorites i would rate it as you know as my sixth most favorite faction and um, with sparta i would actually put them in b tier they're better than Rhodes, but and they're actually even better than pergamon in my opinion and i would actually you know it's quite difficult i would actually put them ahead of the averni but no actually i'm gonna put them behind the averni and the reason being why Sparta does better than Rhodes is, and again, I'm considering the new update, the winter update, is that Sparta is actually the reverse of every other faction. And what I mean when I say reverse of every other faction is that you actually have uh, first class uh, cavalry and you have second or third class infantry. But in the case of Sparta, the case of Sparta, it's reversed. You have first class infantry, so I would say these pikemen are quite good. And in the winter update, you're going to have the thorax variant of these Spartan pikemen, which are going to be even better. And they're going to be equivalent uh, of the uh, thorax bronze shield pikemen. So really looking forward to that. I have made the changes myself. This is something I have worked on and I have forwarded it to Cam. So fingers crossed that he will include it in the coming update. But apart from that, uh, Spartans do have access to the Spartan guest hoplites, which uh, can protect the flanks of your Spartan pikemen. And these guest hoplites actually come from the fourth class population. Some of you who are playing, who have played Sparta, will be like, "No, wait a minute! These guys take three turns to recruit, and they come from the second class population." And you are partially correct. They do take three turns to recruit, but they are incorrectly coming from the second class population. I have notified Cam, and he will correct that. So they will come from the both class population which makes these guys extremely powerful because they are almost as good uh, as your reform spartan hoplites i mean slightly slightly uh lesser stats i mean but uh, you know for the fourth class population versus the first class population totally worth it these guys are absolutely insane Apart from that, when it comes to melee infantry, Spartans don't have a lot of choice. The Skiritai are kind of nice, uh, you know, uh, stealth kind of units, but they are pretty squishy. Uh, they do have the first class uh, Spartan uh, Thorax Swordsmen, and these are going to be changed into second class allied Thorax Swordsmen. So that's another change that might come in this winter update. Um, so just keeping that in mind, I am ranking Sparta that high. Apart from that, they also have Ionian picked uh, Lancers and now these guys uh, also take three turns to recruit and uh, they do correctly come from the fourth class population. So although they are not as good as uh, the cavalry of other factions, they do come from the fourth class population, much like the Roman auxiliary cavalry. So that's actually what puts Sparta ahead. So you pretty much uh, with Sparta can have a core of Spartan uh, Eichmann or Spartan Hoplite in the center flanked by completely auxiliary troops so Sparta is kind of like powerful in that sense next up we have the Mamlakat and Saba these guys are just horrible I mean I could go through the roster really skim through the roster don't really have anything spectacular I mean pretty mediocre melee infantry pretty mediocre spear infantry uh, not so great archers, uh, their cavalry is again pretty mediocre, pretty fast I would say so, but again pretty mediocre. They do have access to camels, but their camels are pretty squishy, so I wouldn't really recommend them. They do have uh, like camel archers, or, or like horse archer kind of camels, do have access to horse archers, but again it's just four armor, and again four armor, so these guys can be easily countered with even, uh, you know, enemy archers. They do have access to chariots but these chariots are like okay i mean they are medium chariots but then again nothing much going on for this faction i would say that these guys really need some sort of a buff and when it comes to the arabian factions when you consider the mamlakat and saka they truly deserve the ftr status 
Moving on to the next Arabian fas uh, faction, you have the Mamlakata Nabata. And in contrast to the Sabateans, these guys actually go in A tier. And they are, in my opinion, actually more powerful than the nomadic factions. And the reason being is a single unit that actually puts them ahead of the nomadic factions. Since the nomadic factions are a one-trick horse archer, one-trick pony which uses pretty much just horse archers. When we look at the Mamlakata and Nabata, um, they do have... A, a horse archer or actually a heavy camel rider which is a camel archer which is similar to the Saka but instead they have 41 armor 18 missile damage and 170 range so these guys are insane they do have good melee stats so they're pretty much um, you know um, nomadic horse archer armies but camel, arch camel archer armies so they pretty much counter horse archer armies in a way because all camel units have the scare horse ability so these guys if you just stack them up you know you, know, you pretty much have a Arabian nomadic army apart from that um, they do have decent uh, versatility when it comes to their infantry type units in comparison to the Sabateans and uh, these units can be used in your seed stacks. For those of you who watch my Parthian series, you will know that I have seed stacks and I have armies that are field armies. And I would recommend stacking these guys for field armies. And they do come from the second class uh, of population. So guys are pretty powerful. I would say um, A tier, really powerful. And this is what surprised me uh, about the Mamlukat in uh, Nabata. Next up, we have the RDAI, and the RDAI aren't really that good. I would put them behind the Caledoni. Uh, they aren't really uh, good in any department. Uh, I quickly move on to the RDAI. Pretty okay cavalry, pretty okay infantry. These two guys are the only infantry that are worth uh, a mention however they do both of them come from the first class population apart from that they have really mediocre levy type so you can go for a numbers game but once again they're not gonna um you know do well against extremely elite armies so if you are facing off against inferior quality troops i would say these troops are quite good However, if you're facing off against elite armies, then your troops are pretty much not as good as you see. You do have some hoplite units. However, these two come from the first class population and they're not as good as other first class population hoplite. Um, I would say the way you'd play the RDAI is quite similar to Sparta. You don't have first class uh, cavalry. So I would recommend, unless you can spam this guy, you can spam the bodyguard. I don't know if that's possible in the campaign. Um, but if it's not, then you only have access to the Illyrian medium cavalry that comes from your second class population. So I would play it a slight reverse. I would uh, focus on first class phalanx units and first class flanking units. Perhaps uh, maybe uh, go for second class cavalry units. So I would put these guys in average behind the Caledonians. Next up, uh, we have the Odrishian Kingdom, and I would actually place these guys in B tier, decent, ahead of Athens. And even though I have a soft corner for the Greek city-states, um, and actually the Thracians were pretty much a long-standing rival, when it comes to the Odrishian factions, they do have a decent uh, cavalry, which are kind of, again, Tarantine cavalry on steroids once again. Uh, so, as you can see, they do come from the first class population, however. But when we move on to their melee units, this is where the faction starts to shine. You do have really good colonist thorax spearmen. And anything with the word colonist in their roster comes from the fourth class population. So, you have colonist thorax spearmen, colonist pikemen, which are once again better pikemen than Pergamese pikemen. You have colonist hoplites, which aren't really good hoplites. Um, but if you want to use them to support your pikemen uh, on the flanks, they're pretty good. But all of these units come from the fourth class population. So you can pretty much have a kind of like Roman type uh, setup over here. You can get some uh, regions, a uh, couple of archers, maybe a couple of elitist peltaste. And as you can see, everything in the uh, lower 
part of the um, of this line comes from the fourth class population so they're quite powerful and quite uh, nothing to scoff at so I would say the Odrishians actually are in my opinion the best B tier or decent faction next up we have the Gete the Gete are quite powerful however they're not as powerful as uh, the Averni I would place them ahead maybe slightly behind the Spartans because the Spartans do have access to those uh, full class population uh, units and if you play your card rights the Spartans will be better than the Gete in this winter update however it's quite neck to neck I will put the Gete over there not much to go through with the Gete the Gete could potentially be a much better faction as they do receive a little bit of an update in this winter patch um, but they do have some decent melee troops, uh, decent cavalry, better than the Spartan cavalry, good, uh, you know, uh, good missile troops as well. However, uh, you know, with their frontline units, they're not as good as Sparta, so um, they are kind of like similar neck to neck with Sparta. Next up, we have the African uh, factions, and with the African factions, we have the Masesli. The Masesli are pretty good, I would put them ahead of Pergamon actually the reason being is that they don't have really good uh, melee troops uh, where are you Masesli um yep there we go uh, they do have a decent melee troops I mean these legionaries come from the second class population so you can pretty much stack them um the spearmen aren't really that great uh, however, I would get a couple of them to counter cavalry since the main focus is missile cavalry and their missile cavalry is quite good. Again, once again, Tarantine cavalry and you hear this recurring theme. I've really started to like missile cavalry and uh, they are kind of like uh, cavalry or Tarantine cavalry on steroids. Uh, pretty good, 8 speed, fastest missile cavalry, 9 ammunition, 7 shots per minute, so these guys will deal a lot of damage per second, 33 armor and respectable melee attack and defense, so they are quite good in that melee. Uh, from that they do have some good skirmishing type units uh, with these archers and their peltas stay worth mention. And of course, they do have access to elephant units and they do have access to 44 of African war elephants, which are quite good, quite powerful. 44 elephants, nothing to scoff at. These guys can do some significant damage, so I would actually place them maybe even ahead of these Spartans. But uh, the thing is, a lot of these um, come from the uh, first, uh, sorry, first and second class population, so... I would not place them ahead of the Spartans. They do have a lot of versatility, however, so definitely uh, neck to neck with these three factions. Next up, we have the Medivi, very similar to the Masesli. And the Medivi, um, in my opinion, slightly better than the Masesli. They don't have as good elephants, 18 elephants, which is similar to the Egyptian variants. However, they do have access to chariots, heavy chariots. These chariots are pretty good. Apart from that, second class decent cavalry with 45 armor. And they do have really good archers as well with 18 damage, 185 range and 7 shots per minute. Low on the armor, however they do have the stock ability so you can really easily flank around. They do have a phalanx and a pike type units, however these are nothing spectacular, they are pretty weak in comparison to their Hellenic counterparts so they won't do really that well however they will do quite well against um, you know lesser factions barbarian factions and when I say lesser factions I don't mean lesser factions I mean factions with lesser quality frontline units these guys would do quite well against uh, let's say uh, even the Averni, uh, Singatoi and Argoi because they have better reach. However, they are a lot weaker because they have lower armor and being a pike unit, they are vulnerable to uh, missile units. So I would use uh, kind of like a screening unit such as these Ethiopian spearmen. You kind of soak in all of that damage. Apart from that, they do have also um, good melee troops. Really good shock. Uh, infantry over here in the Ethiopian Axemen so a bit more versatile than the uh, Masesli as you can see so they are slightly ahead of the Masesli. 
Uh, next up, we move on to the Greek uh, settler factions or the colonist factions. And starting off, we have the Archebosphorus. And I would actually rate the Archebosphorus as better than the Britonic uh, factions, but not as good as Athens. The reason being is that the Archebosphorus are truly quite versatile. However, what they do lack is a good frontline units. They do have phalanx units, decent sword uh, units, some good shock troops over here, decent spear units. Um, but where they shine is actually their access to uh, cavalry, and they do have access to some of those sweet nomadic horse archers, as well as a combination of, um, you know, good lancer and shock cavalry units. So they're quite good, they're quite versatile. However, uh, none of these units come from, uh, you know, a lower population class. So that is why they actually rank behind Athens and the Odrysians. Uh, next up, we have Colchis. Colchis is pretty good. Uh, would rate them ahead of the uh, RDAI, but uh, and in fact, even ahead of the uh, Boyai put them all the way ahead over here and that's because they do have versatility however uh, they are the king of mediocrity and uh, if we quickly move on to Colchis, this is the faction you can see they do have access to some really nice infantry units do have access to some nice phalanx units uh, pretty weak pikemen over here and uh, some decent cavalry no access to horse archers which is surprising but uh, some good archers and pretty much everything is mediocre in comparison to the factions that surround them. And as such, they are pretty average. I would rate them, however, better than... Let's say I, I think they should be even better than even Rhodos and all of these other factions. And uh, the reason being, and I would put Rhodos kind of behind the Iberian factions as well. The reason being is that they are actually the kings of mediocrity and, they, and the reason being is that they have such a versatile army however they just fall short in every single department in comparison to the other B tier or A tier factions. Next up we have Massalia and now Massalia is actually a really good faction I would actually place them in B tier ahead of the Spartans and ahead of all of these other factions and the reason being is that when we go to uh, Massalia, which is over here. Now, in the winter update, I would say it's pretty neck to neck between Massalia and the Spartans. I would actually, in fact, put them over here in the winter update, but that remains to be seen. Uh, but they could be ahead of the Spartans or slightly behind the Spartans, but in the winter uh, edition, uh, they will be behind the Spartans. And the reason being uh, is that uh, the Spartans have access to fourth class population, but the reason why Massalia ranks so high up is that they have access to these uh, Kelto Hellenic uh, units, and all of these Kelto Hellenic units actually come from the third class population, so they even have access to the Kelto Hellenic uh, cavalry as well. So you're looking at a pretty much very similar to Rome sort of a faction, and, and uh, that's quite powerful. Um, but again, not as good as Rome. Every unit is uh, not as good. So if I were to build a Massalian army quite similar to a Roman army, uh, I would have maybe three of these units. So these would be my core legionary units in uh, descending order of their quality. So you'd have my triple S axes with the Salto Hellenic in the front, Romanized infantry behind them. And of course, at last you would have like a tree REI, which is your first class population, Massalian Noble Guard. Then apart from that, I would get some uh, really good Massalian Heavy Cavalry. These come from the second class population, or I could mix it up with Kelto Hellenic Cavalry, which comes from the third class population. And uh, it's actually worth it to get these third class population cavalry because uh, they are not that much worse than the uh, Massalian Heavy Cavalry. However, they do come from the third class population. Could get a couple of these guys. These guys are quite good. Decent melee attack and melee defense, but they do have ammunition. A good skirmisher cavalry. You have good access to Peltaste units. And, uh, and when it comes to Peltaste units, uh, and finally you could get some archers. So this would be a good composition and it's quite similar to a Roman, Romanesque type army. Slightly more cavalry uh, heavy. 
Um, but what I could do is I could replace these two guys for... Yes, and I would want to replace them for kelto Hellenic Spearmen. As uh, they are third class Spearmen and they would kind of like form up the flanks. I could get like four of these units. And they could form up the flanks of my legionary troops. So once again, yes, Massalia, either ahead of Sparta or behind Sparta, depending on the winter update and what Cam actually does when it comes to the Spartan changes. Next up, we have the Syracuseans, and the Syracuseans are pretty okayish. I would put them, um, you know, slightly ahead of or slightly behind the Scordisii. Or ahead, I mean, it's pretty neck to neck with these guys. Reason being is the Syracuseans have a decent, uh, you know, melee infantry, decent flank line troops. You can sort of kind of form a Roman type formation over here, but most of these units come from second class population if you're looking for anything worthwhile. Uh, the cavalry, they do have good cavalry. These Syracusean lancers, as opposed to the Royal Cavalry, come from the second class population. So even though the Royal Cavalry is better, I would recommend these guys. They do have access to Tarantine Cavalry and their own variant of Tarantine Cavalry. However, I would stick to the Tarantine Cavalry. And of course, for the memes, they do have their uh, Gastrophetes or the Crossbow Infantry. Sorry, I butchered the name most likely. But nothing really spectacular, so I would actually rate them behind all of the other colonist factions, all the way behind even the Scottish AI, because the Scottish AI actually have better, uh, you know, frontline troops as they do have access to those short bike units. Next up, we have uh, Media Atropatkan, and these guys are actually eight tier. And we are in the Eastern Factions for now. These guys are A tier. They do rank ahead of the uh, Mamlakat in Nabata. And the reason being um, is that they are a lot more versatile. You can rely on horse archers if you like. You can get some heavy shock cavalry. And these shock cavalry will be better than the nomadic or the uh, Mamlakat in Nabataean versions. And that is because they do come from the Nicene horse breed which is the best horse breed as I have mentioned earlier on in this video. They do have access to some good missile units, some good spear units that are hybrid that can function as missile troops as well. They do have access to a hoplite type unit if you fancy and some decent melee troops and uh, pretty much their melee department is only going to come into use similar to my Parthian campaign when you are besieging a settlement. Next up we have the Armenians and the Armenians actually are B tier. But I would place them ahead of the uh, Bosphoran Kingdom. The reason being is that the Armenians are extremely diverse in comparison to the Bosphoran Kingdom. They have really good uh, cataphract type units with 53 armor which is better than their Bosphoran equivalents. Good melee cavalry um, again with the Nakahar cavalry. Also have access to horse archers and they do have a uh, very good and heavy uh, archer type units apart from that uh, when it comes to their melee troops this is where they start to stand apart from the Bosphoran kingdom the reason being is that they have really good uh, legionary type uh, units as well as good shock uh, good spear units and of course they do have uh, access to pikemen now these pikemen are not as good as other pikemen in fact they are some of the worst pikemen units in the game Slightly better than the uh, version available to Colchis and Kartli. Um, and they are pretty much in line with the version that's available to Pergamon and some other Hellenic factions. So I would actually place them ahead of the Bosphoran Kingdom. Next up we have the Kartli, which is D tier. It's weak. It probably could even be F tier. Slightly better than uh, Mamlakat in Saba. They are D tier because they are pretty much Colchis. Uh, but with a lot worse. So if we actually go to Kartli. Um, where are you? Kartli. Uh, I think they should be somewhere here. There we go. Not much. As you can see. Really, really poor. If I just go to um, Colchis, as you will see. You'll see that they have similar options. But Colchis has a lot more options. And uh, Colchis even has phalanx type troops. These guys don't have it. Missile tribes, uh, troops, Colchis has more. Even cavalry, you know. So they're pretty much really a 
really poor faction, so I would recommend. And they don't even have access to horse archers, so pretty bad. I mean, they do have some nice uh, skirmisher cavalry, like the Carter uh, Valian mounted ambushers. These guys are pretty good. Uh, but all in all, not so good. And along with the Mamelkat and Saba, I think these two factions uh, need some attention, in my personal opinion. Next up, we have Parthia. Parthia is pretty much media atro, but can, but better. So I would rate them as powerful A tier. However, they're not as diverse as Morians and the other factions that are ahead of them. And for most of you who have seen my party in Let's Play series, you will know that they have some of the best cavalry, if not the best cavalry in game, all of which are Nicene cavalry, the best horse archers in game, uh, good camel cataphracts, however, these camel cataphracts um, are not as good as the uh, Mamlakat and Naba camel horse archers, but they do have better armor. And these uh, camel cataphracts are literally the best quarantine or companion type cavalry units you could possibly ask for and that is because they can scare horse they have 51 armor they have about five ammunition 15 melee attack six melee defense these guys are absolute monsters uh, apart from that they do have respectable melee troops that can be used uh, to lay siege to a walled settlement decent uh, party and foot archers as well with 18 missile damage a 185 range slow shot per minute 35 armor that's pretty good however for most of you who have seen my party and let's play series you know that i don't really rely on my own infantry and i really play a satrap uh, a satrapal empire in which i use my satrapies and a mod that is available on the steam workshop to um, recruit um, levy troops from my satrapies However, even if I don't have to do that, they do have a uh, very decent, respectable infantry. Nothing great, not that many options, and each of them actually upgrade into the next, so you pretty much have one option at a time, one melee infantry, or one spearman. Um, however, they are pretty good, so they are going to be ranked higher than the Afropat can. Next up, we have Pontus, and Pontus, in my opinion, is better than uh, Bosphoran Kingdom. And although they're not as diverse, they do have access to chariots. Uh, they do have access to some horse archers. Not that great. I mean, I would say they are a lot more diverse, actually, than the Bosphoran Kingdom. But where they do shine is that they do have better phalanx type of frontline units. They do have access to a thorax bronze shield type unit, which is the third best, as we have found out in this uh, episode in the game. Do have access to some really good uh, swords unit as well as like Galatian warriors. However, most of these come from the second and the first class population, which is why they actually rank behind Athens and of course the Odrishian kingdom when it comes to playing against the AI. Um, that for stat, they are definitely better. The Armenians are also better. However, when it comes to population class, um, Athens and uh, the Odrishian Kingdom are on a league of their own. And finally, we have the final three factions, which are the Germanic factions, starting off with the Kimbrosi. The Kimbrosi, I would actually place them all the way, maybe slightly ahead of uh, the Syracusean faction. And the reason being, they're not really that great of a faction. They are my favorite barbarian faction, and that's because they require a completely different playstyle. They don't really have uh, good spear units, no frontline uh, units, so you'd have to play your way with melee units strictly. However, they do have uh, the Simbri Wolf Warriors, which is pretty good against cavalry units. Um, I would uh, typically try to uh, complement my cavalry with the spear units, since my cavalry units aren't really anything spectacular. They're really weak, especially in comparison to the Gaelic counterparts. Um, they do have some good skirmisher type units over here. These guys, Kimbri Elite Skirmishers, have stock ability as well as decent melee attack and defense. So definitely get those guys as well as their archers also have this stock ability. So I would say all in all, you would play a very ambush styled uh, playthrough with this faction. But they are not as good as the Scordisii, not as good as the Galatians. They don't have that versatility um, and pretty much uh, no frontline units. So definitely would place these guys they're a lot harder to use 
uh, in comparison to factions that do have frontline units as you pretty much just play hammer and anvil but that would not work really well with these guys so you have to play slightly differently with the kimbrosi next up we have the lugii and with the lugii and the uh, swaby they are pretty much very identical however the lugii rank slightly below the swaby i would put the lugii actually actually ahead in uh, c tier ahead of the rhodian faction the reason being is the Lugiai actually have a decent versatility, nothing uh, really spectacular. Um, but they really, really suffer. Their troops are really mediocre. Even their first class infantry. Now, these two swordsmen are first class and they only have 25 armor. So it's not that, uh, not that great. Um, however, you do have access to some pike units. Uh, you also have, uh, these are short pike units, sorry. You do have access to some decent... Uh, uh, spearmen that can counter cavalry some other spear units i would recommend to screen uh, your pike units since these uh, pike units don't have a lot of armor and of course they will take a lot of damage from missile troops so you want these guys to screen um, apart from that they do have all these knight warriors um, which are quite good um, all around so pretty versatile but nothing really spectacular so i would place them in a C tier, but ahead of all of these other factions that are a bit more lackluster, in my opinion. And finally, we have the Swabii, and the Swabii, I would actually place them ahead of maybe even. Nah, I would place them behind the Gete. I think that's a good location, perhaps even behind all of these guys, and uh, maybe up here. And the reason being is that the Swabii is pretty much the Lugii, but uh, better. You have, you don't have all of those sweet knight units. I mean, you have a couple of them, but not as good as the Lugii variants. However, every other unit you have, such as the pikemen, are better. As you can see, this pikeman has 15 armor, better melee attack, defense. And of course, you do have better spearmen, you have better... Axemen and all of these come from second class population, mind you. So, and especially uh, the champions of Tivas, as you can see 17 melee attack, uh, 13 armor penetration, really good morale. So, these guys are absolutely insane. And they will actually also be really good against enemy cavalry. What you don't have as um, as the uh, Swabii are really good uh, cavalry counter spearmen. So you do have the Hari Knight Walkers, um, which could be kind of like the best that you have available. And they do have the scare ability, so that kind of helps. But if you use them as well as the champions of Tivas, I guarantee you they will do quite a lot of damage against any cavalry unit. However, speaking of cavalry, as you can see, we really suffer here on the cavalry so i wouldn't even bother with shock cavalry when it comes to the swabii i would pretty much go for the pentary young riders that come from the second class population and pretty much when it comes to first class population there's nothing much you can get here and uh, yeah unfortunately it is the way it is and uh, yeah without any further ado let's hop back into the tier list maker so as you can see, this is my tier list with Roma, of course, being the best faction possible. And of course, Nam Mamlakat and Saba being the worst faction. And uh, of course, as you can see, it's a nice bell curve sideways over here. You have most of the factions in the B tier, which is decent. And which is what you'd like to see with any game. You don't want to see a lot of OP factions and you don't want to see a lot of weak factions. You want to see pretty much this uh, B and C tier filled out. So what I would suggest um, is to kind of uh, leave uh, these factions as is, perhaps start with the factions um, on the lower end of things and slightly improve them. Um, I'd say, you know, get these guys, I mean, you could leave the C tier factions, but definitely work on Kartli as well as Sab Saba. However, with that, I am going to go ahead and end this video. This is a really long video and I apologize for that. However, it is Christmas special and I hope you all guys, all of you enjoyed. And um, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. And if you like the video, please like the video. And don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more peace and love.